What is going on guys? So in this episode, I am preparing everything for Ocean City, Maryland. At the moment, uh, everything is still fluid with going down there. I had some friends in Ocean City last weekend. They said everything was open and uh, people were around. So it's not like they're on complete lockdown. Um, right now, we are still planning on going. I say we, Corey, myself, my friend Sutton Morris from Sacramento is going to fly out here. Kyron Burnt from Speed Hunters uh, from LA is going to be flying out and we're gonna be caravanning down with a few other friends as well. So I am bringing the Toyota Century this year. And this is a car that I've wanted in Ocean City on the Strip for 10 years now. You know, as many years as I've been going down there basically. And a long wheelbase Century is just something I've always dreamed of seeing on the Strip. And so I am, uh, I am honored to be the person that has one down there uh, since I've always wanted to see one in person, on air, and uh, just kind of in that setting where, where you've got a lot of cars cruising up and down the strip and when you're standing on the sidewalk you're watching you're watching little cars rip by you're watching big cars you know kind of roll slowly by i use long wheelbase cars on the strip in ocean city uh as an example to like uh battle scenes in star wars where the tie fighters and the x-wing fighters and all the small fighter ships are are ripping around shooting at each other and making hard banks and going really really fast amidst all of the massive star destroyers just kind of slowly rumbling through so when i'm standing on the sidewalk on the strip in ocean city and you're seeing r32s and rabbits and 240s and all sorts of other like fast cars rip around then you see this big long wheelbase car laid out just kind of rumbling by real slow and you get a real good look at it because it's going slow it's not ripping too fast and uh, that always gets my blood flowing. I always like seeing like big, big old cars or just land yachts. So I'm excited to have the Century there this year. So those of you who follow me on Instagram would have seen that I sold the Desmonds off the Century back about a week ago. Um, my friend Nick from Massachusetts came up to get those. They fit the car well. The Desmond Verses were designed basically around the Century OEM wheel. Uh, but 17s just look super small on the long wheelbase Century. My good friend Pipey uh, McGraw Drew from England had a short wheelbase Century that he bagged that he had on 16s for a little while and then went down to 14s. And although it was a short wheel base, it pulled off short wheels or small wheels a lot better. And the 14s he had on the car, in my opinion, looked best. They were really wide. Uh, they were Hoshino's, I think, but they looked amazing on the short wheel base. They poked a little bit and were kind of a deep dish wheel. But this long wheel base, I mean, it's significantly longer and it just needs big wheels tucked up under there. Um, especially to look low while you're driving too. So the Desmonds are sold and it was a bit of a gamble because I knew that if I sold the Desmonds a month away from Ocean City, the crunch to find a wheel in 18s with the right specs that weren't gonna cost me a fortune on this car was gonna be hard to do. So I was a little nervous to get rid of the Desmonds this close to Ocean City when the car, in my opinion, looks good on the Desmonds, but I wanted it sitting just right. I really wanted 18s up underneath this car. I need to do a whole bunch of work to the front end. I have to pull the front strut assemblies apart and lengthen them and re-weld them and do a whole bunch of work to the front to get 18s to fit. When I built the suspension, I had the Desmonds here with tires on them and I completely um, disregarded the fact that if I ran an 18 or 19 inch wheel on this car, the bag plate, the bag itself and the bag perch were gonna be in the way with a taller wheel. So. I've got a lot of work to do. So I have found wheels. I just purchased wheels uh, yesterday and they were shipped out from California. Huge thanks to my friend AJ Gillett and Phil from VR Wheels for uh, help facilitating everything and getting some wheels on the way. 
the main plan for the century in Ocean City this year is an idea I've had since I got the century. And that is to do a mini series podcast series uh, or a limited series podcast series called Podcast of the Century. And if you listen to my podcast, Purpose and Passion, I've talked about this uh, like sub podcast a few times there. And it's something I'm super excited about. So basically the, the overall idea is uh, Corey or Sutton or one of my friends will ultimately pilot the century and I'll be in the back seat with a friend, a guest, for 15 minute podcast shorts as we cruise the strip. So ultimately, you know, kind of like a really cool environment for a podcast where not only are we surrounded by the craziness that's usually going on in Ocean City, uh, but we'll be in you know, a one of 400 ever built flagship Toyotas from Japan you know, it'd be kind of a cool environment to be in to chat with some friends for 15 to 20 minute podcast shorts. So with that being said, I have a bit of work ahead of me um, as far as setting the podcast up in the back of the century uh, to get all my gear set up and stationary. Uh, the mic arms are going to be kind of a task, but I've got a new plan set up for that. Uh, that's what I'm working on today is getting my mic boom arms mounted securely in the car because they, they need to be they're pretty heavy they're metal and they need to be fastened pretty well when you're adjusting the microphone because they have quite a bit of leverage for how long the boom arms are so i've got a game plan together for that and that's what i'm working on today is getting the mic boom arms securely fastened in the car in a comfortable position where they're not in the way when you want to get in and out of the car they're not going to be in the way for um the video cameras i'm going to have set up in the car um, they're not going to be blocking anyone's face or anything like that. I'll give you guys a quick look on the owner's seat. This is the owner usually sat opposite the driver. I want to do a proper walk around this car. The YouTube series episodes that we did when we drove this cross country from Seattle, Washington to here in New Hampshire, I didn't really get a good detailed review of the car and walk around in detail video of the car. Um, probably because I didn't even think of that because we had such a task at hand to get the car prepped and ready and drive 3,500 miles basically zigzagging across America as we did TGC pop-up meets all the way home. So one of these episodes coming up, I am going to do a proper walk around of the car and show you all the crazy intricate details of this car and all the crazy technology that Toyota uh, put into this car in the early 90s. So as we enter the back seat, We've got quite a setup in here. We've got a TV, VCR. This used to be a cassette player, but now it's a CD player. This was put in in Japan at some point. We've got the entertainment and HVAC uh, controls right here and readouts. And what's crazy are the controls are a pop-out remote. And everything's in Japanese, which in my opinion is so cool. But remote controlled HVAC and entertainment system so rad someone put in an aftermarket tv in the headliner this is a big fold down tv uh, this is obviously done in japan as well the car hasn't been modified uh until i got it here in america so everything in this car was done in japan up overhead here we have the rear massaging seat controls which still work by the way pretty cool and there's a built-in audio recorder as well which is really cool that's all electric <laughs> Put a cassette in there and i haven't checked to see if all this stuff like actually works i'm not sure if it does but the fact that this had actual audio recorders back here is pretty rad so i'd really like to integrate this into the podcast or even if i just record an intro of the podcast on cassette and then transfer that to digital so the car itself actually recorded the intro to the podcast so as I mentioned, today I'm going to be getting my mic boom arms mounted. Uh, I'm going to be making a metal bracket that will mount to the lower seat bolt on both sides. And I'm going to go to the computer in the laser machine and uh, laser cut some template pieces that I'm going to bend uh, that will come out and mount down here on the floor. My plan is for videos to have uh, GoPro mounted to the back window facing forward so you can kind of see what we see and a GoPro mounted up front the top where the partition window goes facing back so you can obviously see us while we're talking. 
basically the plan for the mic arm stands I'm gonna pre-pro cut everything out of cardboard first just kind of test fit everything before we go to my father's uh, plasma table and actually cut it out of steel so by the time we cut it out of steel everything's exactly where I want it so we're gonna start working on that but first it is afternoon coffee time so gonna fire up the Corvair and take that into town get a nice coffee from the channel's unofficial coffee sponsor Dunkin Donuts I know I know there's way better coffee out there but this is what we got to work with in Meredith New Hampshire so Got to get a coffee and then get right on those microphone mounts so I can actually get something done today. Because filming stuff for the YouTube takes way too long. I seriously can't get enough, give enough credit to all you YouTube guys out there, all the other YouTube guys out there that get things done in a shop that are one-man operations, that don't have a production team filming and shadowing them. So all they have to do is actually get work done and they've got a production team filming and editing and uploading and doing all of that logistical work. But... All you guys that reach out and say you watch the YouTube channel and you like watching these videos, it means the world to me. So that's why I'm doing it. So hopefully all this stuff comes together and you guys enjoy seeing how I get the podcast of the century off the ground. Okay, quick coffee run. I just want to give Airlift Performance a shout out in this episode. Corey Rossa from Airlift hooked me up with the 3H system in the Corvair uh, back in late 2015, back when 3H and 3P system was first unveiled at SEMA. And this is the same manifold, same everything uh, in this car for the last five years, going on six years now. This is five full years, technically, 2020, just about the fall. And... I've had zero issues with this setup, zero. I've had the Airlift 3H and 3P systems in six cars now. It's currently in the century uh, since AccuAir called it quits. I've since put the uh, Airlift 3H system in this car. Um, I was super excited to work with AccuAir on this car. Super good guys there, but uh, with them tanking and calling it quits, I, I needed a system in this car that was gonna have sales and support service. So. This system right here has been in the Corvair for five solid years without a single issue. I think I blew a key power fuse once, like last year, and that was it. Um, so super, super happy with Airlift Performance. Definitely look into them for any of your air suspension needs. You can actually hit up uh, my friends at Bag Riders in Vermont, too, at bagriders.com for any uh, of Airlift or any of, your, any of your air suspension needs that you might require for your project, including all airlift performance stuff obviously. 